I decided to talk about uh, something that uh, it is very relevant about uh, innovation, catching up, and industrial development. Uh, and the implications, I, I hope, uh, will become clear uh, when, uh, when I will illustrate the topic. But it is uh, a little bit uh, um, aside, and is, a, I think, a major theme in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in innovation and industrial dynamic uh, um, issue. So basically, when we look at catching up industrial development, we look at countries, we look at industries, we look at regions, uh, we look at firms, which is fine. I did the same, you know, sectoral system, as Paolo mentioned, uh, industrial dynamics and so on. But uh, here my point is different. My point is uh, that uh, if I succeed, uh, is uh, in the study of innovation, industrial dynamic, and sector evolution, it is time to move from consideration of a single industry to, to analysis of related industries. So basically, uh, uh, how industries are related and how industries evolve over time is very important for understanding the dynamic and evolution of countries. And uh, uh, today we concentrate uh, on vertically related industries. And I, I will try to show at the end uh, that this may have major implication for analysis of economic growth uh, and catch up. So which is the roadmap of today? So I, I, I want to uh, bring some steps for understanding the relationship between innovation, industrial dynamics, and the broader evolution uh, of industries in vertically related industries by focusing on three dimensions. The role of demand, which is very important if you look at vertically related industries, startups, uh, vertical integration, and the interrelated uh, dynamics of market structure, and third, uh, institutions and vertically related sectoral systems. So, uh, when we talk about related industries, I'm not mentioning a new topic. I mean, Schumpeter, when discussing long ways, has already discussed clusters of industries, how the emerger and they drive uh, innovation, and these industries are related in various ways. Uh, Simon Kuznets, in his analysis of secular movements of countries, have always discussed how industries grow uh, and, and, and develop uh, uh, together, I mean, some uh, certain industries. You know, everybody knows Hirschman and Damen and the development blocks, uh, how the countries may have pushed or blocked blocks because sectors could be related in various ways. Chris Freeman recently, talking about long waves, uh, again discussed clusters of sectors that emerge uh, and, and, and drive uh, uh, economic growth. Nate Rosenberg, talking about machine tools and general purpose technologies, talks about vertically related industries. And then if you look at the recent uh, contribution on industrial clusters, uh, vertical integration and related diversification, again, there is a lot of discussion about, uh, uh, about, uh, about related industries. What I want to do here is look how these industries that are related evolve over time, not taking snapshot, but look at the interrelated dynamics of uh, 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 industries. And I think it's a very important and I think relevant dimension. So my point here is that evolutionary theory, innovation and innovation system has brought great new understanding of uh, the dynamics and the uh, evolution of vertically related industries. Why? Because, of course, uh, uh, both evolutionary theory and innovation system thinking has given a lot of emphasis on knowledge, how knowledge is relevant for innovation, how knowledge crosses uh, industry's boundaries in various ways, has given a lot of emphasis on capabilities, and capabilities are a major driver of vertical integration, of diversification, and so on. 
major role of links and relationship among different heterogeneous actors that may span over industries and a major role of institutions. Institution not only of a specific industry but of related industries. And uh, uh, if you are an evolutionary economist then you should follow what C.P. Winter says, dynamics first. Don't take a snapshot of vertical related industry and say okay this is uh, vertical integration, this is you know diversification, but look how uh, the movement and the dynamics uh, uh, take place and how industries evolve over time. So uh, evolutionary theory and, and innovation system uh, thinking, I think, provide us, I think, very important inroads of looking at not a single industry, but as industries as vertically related. Uh, let me just start by saying, okay, this is uh, a topic that has not been uh, new, in a sense, uh, transaction cost uh, as discussed, uh, relationship uh, among vertically related industries, the, le the, the level of transaction cost that affect uh, specialization or vertical integration, therefore, in one way or the other, industries could be related. There is an enormous, enormous uh, body of work of knowledge flows, knowledge spillover, call it what you want, through patent citations and so on, they discuss how knowledge spills over knowledge flows among industries, some of which are vertically related. And there is another great literature on personal mobility that moves uh, across industries. Again, also personal mobility brings knowledge, embodied knowledge, from one industry to the other. So it's very important in affecting the dynamic of this industry. But today, I want to focus on three, I'd say, rather unexplored topics. The role of demand, the role of startups, uh, which I will call vertical entrance, vertical integration and in the interrelated dynamics of market structure, and then finally institutions and vertically related sectoral systems. Let me just start by the role of demand in vertically related sectoral system, which is basically the junction between the two industries that are vertically related. Again, uh, we know, uh, again from uh, Smith and Stigler, that the size of the market uh, is a major driver for specialization and vertical integration. We know from Hirschman, again, the linkages and the requirements and development blocks or whatever, uh, provides uh, uh, major, uh, a major impact on the evolution of vertical related industries. And then you know that there are virtuous or vicious cycles uh, from the main to the vocal industries. A lot of studies are just quoting uh, uh, two in the catch-up literature. One from our president uh, that discussed uh, the role of uh, the machine tool industry and the automobile industry in Korea. And the other one that I just did uh, with you, Adam and Zhang, on uh, telecommunication and semiconductors. And both of them show that you may have a very strong, very strong and highly competitive uh, final product industry, the automobile or the telecommunication, but if these uh, uh, companies in these industries want to compete internationally, they don't want to buy a uh, lower level and not the art components produced domestically. They buy internationally if they want to survive. And this kills completely the, the possibility of having vertical relation uh, and, and, and the possibility of vis uh, virtual cycles for the domestic industry. So these are, I think, uh, 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 well uh, uh, discussed uh, roles. I think also uh, it's a very interesting to look at demand and innovation. You know, Ben Toke. Lundwald, von Ippel, and others have discussed uh, the role of user-producer interaction with uh, a lot of uh, uh, analysis uh, on, uh, in companies, uh, uh, industries, computers, machine tools, medical devices, video games, and now you have CIS, uh, you have case studies, and so on. But I think uh, a question that always remains uh, 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 pending is how relevant how relevant is uh, the role of users uh, 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 in innovation when you take a whole sector 
And I think we did this exercise uh, 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 some years ago, and now we are replicating. And I tell you, the results are exactly the same six or seven years ago. Because you say, well, you know, things have changed. What we did is took the semiconductor industry, and we look at the patents, and we, and we identified all the assignees of the patents, whether they were companies of the semiconductor or companies of other industries, automobile, telecommunication, and so on. And this is what we found. So in terms of patent counts, and then also patent citations, but I just, I don't want, I, I have limited time, the number of patents held by uh, users is higher than the number of patents held by semiconductor producers. These are companies. And then we put also uh, universities and so on. So we are talking about a link. I think the, 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 I started with thinking, linking about vertical rating industry. A link in innovation that is tremendous. Uh, ben Toke was right, uh, Von Lippel was right, but here we have the, the idea of the magnitude. And we also have uh, uh, this idea of co-patenting, again, the role of co-patenting between uh, uh, semiconductor firms and, and users is very relevant. And we also have uh, the relevant uh, uh, role in R&D alliances between uh, uh, semiconductor firms and users. So we are talking about uh, something that is uh, a first link related to innovation tells us that in certain industries, maybe more GPTs than others, but in any case, the users not only are, are important in some innovation, but they're tremendously important. And we should not, when we discuss uh, industry analysis, take away the role of the downstream users in producing innovation that are relevant for uh, firms uh, and, and, and for the industry itself. Okay, this is my first point. Uh, and of course, uh, the explanation for semiconductors is related to evolutionary theory kind of view of knowledge that has become very important. Design capabilities are spread to users. Uh, uh, semiconductors uh, have become uh, very important in terms of strategy, in strategic role in systems. Uh, you have high customization of, of user needs uh, and a lot of application knowledge remains sticky. This is for semiconductors and of course if you take other industries uh, the explanations could be different. We are doing also other, we are examining also other industries in addition to updating uh, this uh, type of, uh, of analysis. So the first point is don't forget uh, the role of demand as a source of innovation not just in terms of cases but in terms of magnitude. The second point, I think, is, uh, 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 is quite different. Uh, we'll talk about uh, vert startups, uh, vertical integration, and the interrelated dynamics of market structure. If you have two industries that evolve, uh, and they are interrelated, the dynamics of the upstream industry affect the dynamic of the downstream industry, and the opposite, the dynamics of the downstream industry affect the dynamics of the upstream industry. Early study we know from, again, Stigler, size of the market affects vertical integration and specialization, transaction cost that I mentioned. Now, there is a recent uh, a stream of literature on capabilities that recognize that capabilities uh, uh, are the main uh, factor that affect the vertical scope uh, of firms uh, and the evolution of vertical rated industry. And there are a lot of some empirical analysis and also some evolutionary models uh, that discuss how um, the level and distribution of capabilities in the downstream industry, in the upstream industry, and their interaction with transaction costs affect vertical integration and specialization. Fine. So this is something that we know. There is evidence. Uh, there is a great paper by Connie Helfat that discuss all these kind of things in a qualitative way, and all these models uh, 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 that have been done uh, both in more formal way and more history friendly uh, way. Now, what I want to do is uh, that there is another killing, and I want to be uh, uh, um, uh, strong about that, uh, that related to vertical, uh, vertical uh, industry. That is what we call supplier industry spin outs and user industry spin outs. You know about spin offs, Steve Klepper and all these uh, companies that, that emerge. Uh, out of existing companies. What has been not studied and is absolutely relevant is that a lot of 
new companies that emerge out of uh, existing established companies cross industry boundaries and go downstream of upstream. In a sense, there are user industry spin outs that are startups uh, that are founded by ex, ex employees of firms in the downstream industries and move up. Why? Because they have a deep and contextual knowledge about application and experience working with focal firms that could be very important. And then supplier industry spin out, that is, independent startups uh, that uh, uh, move uh, downstream from supplier industry because they have knowledge about key components or subsystem and, uh, and have experience of working with the needs of customers uh, of, of the focal industry. We are talking about a kind of new category in addition to vertical integration, collaboration, and networks that links industry. It has never been discussed or found, but I think it's absolutely relevant if I tell you the, uh, the number. I give you a current research. What we did uh, is uh, we took two industry industries, semiconductor, telecom, and uh, telecom equipment and telecom network and connectivity, and we saw how this, there is a lot of movement of spin up that move up and move down. Well, you say could be one or two companies, not at all. 30% of the 96 uh, uh, um, independent startup in the semiconductor industry in the US between 1997 and 2007 are spin outs uh, whose founders come from downstream industries. Again, we traced the founder. And 21% of the 90 independent startups in telecommunication equipment in the US, again in the same period, are spin outs whose founders come from upstream. So you have a lot of movement. And this movement brings knowledge from one industry to the other. Not only that, vertical spin-outs survive more than other companies. In a sense that uh, uh, the user industry spin-outs or the supply industry spin-outs have a higher likelihood of surviving. Why? Because they have knowledge of markets, of knowledge of key technologies. And this makes them much more um, competent and more capable of surviving than uh, independent, uh, independent uh, startups. So in a sense, uh, what uh, uh, I'm saying is that uh, vertical spin-outs affect the, in the industrial dynamics and industry evolution because they introduce from upstream or downstream as new firms uh, knowledge related to downstream application, upstream components in the focal industry, modify incredibly the rooster of participants, the number of entrants that are not just the de novo or the academic uh, uh, spin-outs, and affect the selection process. In an evolutionary way, these companies kick the other companies out. So in a sense, knowledge is transferred across uh, industry boundaries through the formation of new and independent firms. And if you look at these uh, uh, um, industries, you have to take these vertical links in mind, because otherwise you don't understand where these companies come from and why these companies are selecting out, surviving more than the other. What we are doing also now is uh, uh, expanding this type of uh, research by taking two industries and bringing in competition, so competition in the two industries, in terms of number of firms and so on. And, and what we found is that if you take the links between vertical uh, related industries into account, this vertical entrance, all what uh, previous research has done is completely reversed. There's a great paper by Figueredo, the Figueredo and Silverman, that said, well, if you have more competition upstream, the more competition upstream will reduce the price uh, of the components that are sold to the downstream industry, and therefore all the Downstream producers will benefit and there will be less selection, more survival, and so on. Well, if you take into account this possibility of vertical entrance, you have exactly the opposite result. That is, you have a, a higher uh, level of exit and lower level of survival. So, in a sense, I, I just uh, skip through. This is just uh, our uh, uh, econometric analysis, basically we show that density in the upstream industry has a positive effect on the probability of entry downstream through vertical entrance, as one would expect. Uh, uh, but then we also show that uh, 
density upstream, in a sense, uh, increase the hazard of exit because uh, the vertical entrance kicks out, kick out, they're so strong, kick out the other firms in the industry because they have a much better knowledge of key components and of the market in which they enter. So in a sense, of firms originating in the upstream industry have a higher likelihood of survival in focus spin out. Well, you say this is econometrics, this is uh, how are these uh, uh, um, dynamics uh, uh, taken into account? Well, you know, being a fond of history-friendly model, with my cohorts, uh, we took uh, those two industries and we modeled the two industries. We modeled the semiconductor and the uh, telecom equipment industry in a history-friendly fashion, and we saw and we tried to, to see whether these mechanisms are at work and how, uh, how the, uh, the result is. And basically, we, with the model builds on the on our book uh, and also on another paper with uh, Luigi uh, Cap and, and Capone. Uh, uh, that, and when we have two industries, an upstream industry and a downstream industry, and that will be very short. Uh, basically, in the upstream industry, you have component producers that produce a single product that could be incrementally improved through innovative activities. And component products are specific to downstream uh, submarkets, but sometimes they will be adapted to other submarkets. And uh, we, we try to keep uh, density, upstream density constant over time. Uh, and firm exit, as uh, usual, if you don't have any customer from the downstream industry. Uh, and, and each upstream firm has a fixed exogenous probability to generate a vertical spin out in the downstream industry. The downstream industry has companies that produce a single product. Uh, and they can introduce products incrementally. Uh, and, and in, improving uh, existing products. Consumers uh, have heterogeneous preferences, of course, uh, but they can adapt also to non-optimal products. There is, of course, uh, 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 selection processes. Uh, but then one, uh, once a firm selects the fittest supplier among the available ones, uh, it keeps it for a certain number of periods. But vertical entrance has the advantage of having lower search costs for suppliers. And then you have another type of firm, the novel firms that enter exogenously, and then focus spin out that enter for, through, uh, uh, from existing producer. Well, you have two cases typical of history friendly model. The case in which uh, there is no, we shut out uh, vertical spin outs, no possibility of links uh, of firms moving from one. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 another. and the other when there is possibility. And this is uh, the simulation results. In case of no vertical entrance, this is what the previous work says. Well, uh, increasing density upstream improves survival condition downstream in the sense that benefits to lower prices and so on. But if you increase vertical entrance, the possibility that you have this enormous amount of spin outs that move from one industry to the other through knowledge. Uh, increasing density downstream worsens uh, survival condition downstream. And this is because the vertical spin outs perform better than other entering, kick them out uh, from the industry. OK, so basically, you see that this is also there is a major uh, dimension to take into account, which is basically related to this uh, vertical entry, vertical integration, and the interrelated dynamics of market structure. Don't take an industry in isolation. Be careful, because maybe what is missing out could be very relevant. The last part, and that will be extremely sh uh, short, is bringing out a more complex uh, view of uh, industry uh, with sectoral systems, in which uh, you take into account demand, uh, uh, supply, and institutions. And then we have this paper with uh, Lee and Yang and Zue on, uh, on, on mobile communication uh, uh, in, in China. And we, we discuss uh, the evolution of, uh, of, of, uh, of this sectoral system. And basically what you have is we reconstruct in an appreciative, qualitative way the relationship between uh, uh, the mobile communication system in center and the upstream sector and the downstream which goes beyond uh, just vertical integration, but is knowledge that flows uh, 
associations and collaborations in various ways and so on. And this is much more clear if you look at uh, the evolution of mob mobile communication from 1 or 2G, where basically the systems were completely separated, to 3 and 4G, where you have strong links uh, with upstreams, camera, panel display, and semiconductors, to 5G, where really the links between uh, sectoral systems are very strong in all ways, therefore you cannot take into account a, a mobile phone as an independent sector. Let me conclude. Uh, my uh, takeaway is that, first of all, try to move the analysis of innovation, industrial dynamics, and sectoral evolution from studies of individual industries to studies of related industries, when it's necessary, of course because links and interdependencies are pervasive and strong in several industries. Take into account demand, vertical entrance, vertical integration and innovation system <laughs> using an innovation, an evolutionary innovation system approach because innovation in focal industry is definitely, could be definitely affected by knowledge and capabilities of upstream suppliers and downstream users. Vertical entry and vertical integration uh, and the dynamics of market structure are definitely influenced by the type of distribution of knowledge and capabilities in the upstream and downstream industries. And the evolution of a sectoral system, again, as I showed, is affected by the upstream and downstream sectoral system and institutions. But these links and interdependencies, this is what I started, uh, uh, may also great influence uh, the economic development and catch up of countries. Uh, but then, what is very interesting for analytical uh, uh, purposes, it is relevant to examine how much of these links are local and how much of these vertical links are global and the different consequences for the dynamics of local focal firms, foreign firms, uh, and multinational corporations. And I think this is a big challenge for the analysis. Thank you.